the second meeting, Creighton came out on fire that first time they played. As you hear the starting lineups, sponsored by Jeep, there's only one. Ryan Kalsbrenner in the middle had six blocks in that first meeting. 17 points, eight rebounds, Arthur Kaluma, a double-double. Kadari Richmond's been so important to see Paul this year. He really has, and, and I think moving him into the starting lineup, talking to Shaheen Holloway, and, and letting him play point guard. You know, one thing you have to understand about playing point guard is you also have to guard a point guard, and he's done a much better job of that, Richmond. Yeah, Sean, his first season back here at Seton Hall, he played here 96-2000, as most of you know. I, I think that's a great point, Donnie, though. Uh, people think about it in the offensive terms, right? You put somebody in as a point guard, the plus-minus really matters. And it's a conversation that Shaheen Holloway has had many times with Kadari Richmond. Listen, I'm going to allow you to, to run this team on one end, but you also have to try to run it on the defensive end as well because that is their identity. Big East basketball tonight. Thank you for joining us. A Big East doubleheader coming your way, and Creighton has it first. This is Ryan Nemhard, the sophomore point guard, who's so important to this team, leading them in minutes per game. Here is Nemhard. The opening three is cash. Plays with so much patience. You don't realize as you, you until you start reading. The, the media notes and you really start to dig into who this Creighton team is is how young they are <laughs> You know in the day and age of the portal and, and so many transfers. They only have two on this team Yeah, Seton Hall's got a couple of guys from the ACC as there is Tyree Samuel had that knocked out of bounds And it's gonna be Creighton basketball off the deflection I think it's important to know that Ryan Nemhart his last five games got 21 assists and 10 turnovers so we talk about being on the road taking care of the basketball and he's done that his last five and that's why you'll see a lot of time when you watch this Creighton team coach McDermott is not yelling out plays he has that much trust in a guy like Nemhard and Alexander as well it's not just the scoring for Nemhard as you're talking about it's the way he runs their system that Greg McDermott raves about the way he and Paul Frenner played together. This one gets spiked back inbound. Samuel comes up with it for Seton Hall the other way. As Alamir Daw is off the shot fake. He's been great at getting to the line. His whole team has been great at getting to the line. Step back. Three on his mind there to tie the game. Arthur Paluma is such a tough guy to defend for Seton Hall. First time around. Lost it on the way up. Richmond just tunnels to the rim. He missed it short, and Alexander broke down on the rebound. Everybody getting to the rim so far, and it's going to be one of those games, don't you think? Yeah, how about Seton Hall allows you to get downhill, but they just get in such great position. Not only do they stay in front and disrupt, but they also bring three or four guys to come rebound. That's what makes them effective because they're not a big team by any means. Seton Hall, a team that's been down double figures each of their last couple wins. There's a takeaway for Alexander, who had 27 last time out in that win against Nova. And a three for Baylor Shireman, his 34th straight game with at least one three. And against Nova, his only basket was a three. He was one for six in that game. So good for Creighton to see him get it going early. How big's he been on a glass for them? Yeah, a guy that not not overly big, but just has that knack, that instinct for being and watching the ball and being around it. Samuel on the face up, tough two, and it bounces in. Such a strange year for Creighton. They've lost six in a row. They've won six in a row. They've won six in a row currently. And one of those teams on the upward move in the Big East as Richmond misses that jumper. I'm not sure if you're a reader, but it's like a Clancy novel. Emotional ups, downs, highs, lows. That's basically what Creighton's season has been. Uh, they had more of a red December than a red October, yes, I would you're argue. Right. So I a reader though, you can't just watch the movies, Kennedy. Well, I just I just really <laughs> like that you said I'm not sure if you're a reader. Well, I'm not. <laughs> After doing a game with I, me. I, I want to be honest with our fans. No, I appreciate okay. that. Yeah. People mostly can't tell <laughs> if I'm literate. <laughs> Richmond knocks down a jumper. Kadari Richmond, the Syracuse transfer. We got in foul trouble early in the first meeting, and that changed the game. 
Yeah, he has to understand sometimes you never want to tell a player give up a basket But if you're hot and you got it going you're more important on the floor than you are sitting on that bench with foul trouble Alexander Missed it called Brenner the offensive rebound and this ends up out of bounds as the graphics come up during the course of the game, will you just read them to me? I will. I'll, I'll actually just write it down. Thank you. But this, you can write down. Alamir Dawes, the step back. <laughs> it's raining threes. So far for Seton Hall. We've seen it in Big East play where Chaka Smart and Marquette have that whiteboard behind the bench and a number of teams do keep track of it a little more conspicuously. Oh, Kaluma just worked through the forest and stuffed it down. A little lack of communication there, I think. Casey Nadefo a little upset that he was pulled, but that's what happens when you, you have guys like an Arthur Kaluma who just have a knack for scoring when they're in a good way. 30 starts last year as a freshman at Creighton, another one of those pretty young players, a sophomore out of Glendale, Arizona. Richmond so good at finding that mid-range jumper and the rebound taken away by Samuel because Shireman and Paul Brenner got caught up a lot of hands in there and no whistle still no fouls in the game about five minutes in Nice knock away there to deny the entry feed by Nadefo Even when Nadefo was upset and one end he didn't get a foul call. This is just great fight Initially by Samuel, but look at that, Nadefo over the top. But for Creighton, Nadefo continues to get back. You know, sometimes players hang their head, they get upset, they pout. Not him, he just continues to play Casey Nadefo. Well, he is such an emotional driver of this team and such an effort guy for this team. As there's a takeaway, Kaluma lost it, and it's a free run to the rim for Alamir Dawes. So you just can't play around with the basketball. You, you, you can't dribble in front of guys. You have to pay attention and, and value your possessions when you're in front of a defender in a white uniform tonight. You just got done talking about deflections. It turns into a pick six, essentially. Paul Brenner fighting with Samuel, and he strengthens through. And that's a nice play. It's, it's not particularly a, a, a strong suit of Paul Brenner to back guys down to post up. He's getting better at that, but, but mostly second shot player, a block some shots, the pick and rolls. So it's a good sign for Creighton that he can score with his back to the basket. Samuel somehow gets up to stop that thing. How do you do this? I mean, he was basically flat-footed. Now Paluma on the first foul of the game gets a chance at a three-point play. I mean, that's how you finish against a, a seven-footer. You go up soft, he's gonna block it. They, we talked about you know, Brenner and his ability to to block shots, but this is how you have to finish. You take it at the chest of a big guy, and then you dunk it. You finish strong. And then the other end, you got to make sure you get back, but that's Kaluma again, working around the basket. So really has a knack for scoring. Off the front iron and through, Creighton's been an outstanding free throw shooting team, one of the best Greg McDermott's had in his 13 years at nearly 75%. This is not a deep Creighton team. So they go to the bench for the first time with Sharif Mitchell. Francisco Farabello is out tonight. He is under the weather. And so it really is a three-man bench, maybe four. Yeah, 65 of their 77 points per game. The starters, Creighton. Reverse layup wouldn't fall, and this is going to go the other direction. On a whistle against Seton Hall and a push. It's Samuel second. And that hurts because a, a team that's already small, Tyree Samuel goes to the bench, and now they get even smaller chance for Trey Jackson to come in. Maybe the advantage has to, if you stress the positives, now maybe Kalkbrenner will have to be away from the basket on the defensive end, but you're going to have to help down low against Kalkbrenner on defense if you see the ball. So it's more an issue on the defensive side than the offensive side. Where it side is. Yeah. yeah, but you got to communicate, you got to talk, you, you got to fight. Alexander lost it another Creighton turnover number six on an average of 11 for the game for the year Jameer Harris gets to the rim and scores and a foul you know, We talk about Kadari Richmond and his conversations he's had with Shaheen Holloway and, and trying to play certain roles 
Amir Harris the same way. He's one of those guys that you don't just want shooting jump shots or playing around with the ball, three, four, five dribbles. Try to be a straight line guy. There you go. That, that, that's where it pays off. That's where your success is. We've both seen Seton Hall. You have more than I have. But he was such a great shooter last year at 37 percent. It just hasn't been the case from three this year. But to your point, he gets to the rim, finds himself a, a good early one. And, and they need more of that from him. Obviously, last year, you, you got different players, different weapons. So you have an opportunity to shoot wide open shots. Not this year. Not a lot of perimeter weapons for Seton Hall in terms of three-point shooting. Well, the 281st in the country from three. If there is a foul on the shot, so they're going to give two free throws. Kip Kissinger just signaled that it was a shooting foul against Creighton. We talked about him earlier. Kadari Richmond's size, those shoulders. He gets downhill. Really, that, that was no contest for Sharif Mitchell. Yeah, you could say that the shooting portion of the foul, uh, Sharif don't like it, but <laughs> the, it was a foul. It didn't right. look like it was a shooting foul uh, to him. Here, the Casbah, wherever it is. Yeah, wherever it, wherever might, have it happened. might have happened. How do you stop the Dari Richmond from getting to the ring? You got to pick him up early. You know, you, you hear this with bigs. The coaches say, get your work done early. It means shut the guy off the block. Guard same way, Jason. You got to get up into him as soon as he gets over the half court. You can't wait for him to get to that foul line. Ooh, another deflection, and they get Nadepo on his first foul. Hands in the cookie jar, though, all night long for Seton Hall to this point. It's a, a risky proposition for a, a defensive team like Seton Hall. You're trying to force the officials to call the game the way you play. And the problem with that is you get a couple early tic tac fouls. Now you're in a situation where you got to get into that bench. And well, that's a bench without Dre Davis tonight with the ankle injury and a bit of a delayed whistle and a foul against Dre Jackson, the big in for Samuel, who's in foul trouble. I'm not so sure. Listen, you, you, this is what fans do, but there's a foul there. You, you know, there, there's you slap down. Whether it's on the shooting, and it, it's it's an obvious foul. So if you're Trey Jackson, you've already done as much as you can. So now you stand, you can test late. You have to stay on the floor because another foul, and this turns into a six-five and under league for. That's Paul. right. But I, but I do want to know. I mean, you played in this league. You played in the NBA. How do you tell somebody you've done everything you can when there's such pride as an athlete? Yeah. It, it, it's just knowing the scouting report. Kalkbrenner is not going to hurt you from the Big East logo. He's just not. He's going to hurt you from that lower circle. So as a player, you have to understand what's the scouting report. He shoots a jump hook from the Big East logo. we got to live with that. Instead, two free throws, and Clayton retakes the lead, 17-16. Richmond, a little two-man game, and a chance to handle, and a whistle on that connection. It goes against Creighton. The depo just juggled it a little bit. And this is where you have to take advantage when King's in the game for Kalkbrenner. You have to attack the young fella down low, the depot much quicker, but you, you have to understand when Kalkbrenner's out, it's a different look for Creighton. You're saying you just have to get the ball down low. When he's you gotta attack the rim. Trey Jackson gets by Shireman. Oh, he's met by King beautifully on the help. Shireman had a chance at a catch and shoot. Instead, he'll kick it out for Paluma. And that is out of bounds to the Blue Jays. Exactly eight minutes in. It's pretty much what we expected. Back and forth, rubber match. That time of year, Benetti. There is. Play Seton Hall basketball. We can't worry about records. We've got to worry about us. And the part of worrying about yourselves is playing that team that's in front of you, respecting 17 in the nest, 12 and 10 prime today. I mean, if they make a run at Madison Square Garden, this is a top four seed. Absolutely. I agree. Alexander on the skip, got it to the corner, and an open look for three for Mason Miller, his 12th three of the year. The spacing was phenomenal. It's really what makes Creighton so good. 
And, and when you're playing against a team that overhelps and, and defensively they really want to jam things up, that's where your open shots are going to come from. Weak side. Let's take a look, Jason. This is just, it's great that you have your head up. But look how far away the defense is. So now it means the further out they pressure you, the more your help has to come over. And now there's that space on the weak side and more room to recover. They just couldn't get there. As you were saying that, the second foul on Trey Alexander, who's a big time player for crazy this year. Richmond to the rim, deflected and pulled down by Sharif Mitchell, who's only played double figure minutes seven times this year, but he is well on his way. Trey Alexander gets into that mode sometimes, some early fouls. He's just so active. On the road, you can't do it. Nemhard for three and the largest lead for Creighton at seven. Yeah, lack of communication again. The, the spacing is, is putting a lot of pressure on Seton Hall's defense. You know, you think you're pressuring guys out some 28, 30 feet, but that also means you have more room to recover, a longer way to run on those skip passes. We've seen it twice in two possessions as uh, Shireman got a hand on that. But we know from watching the Big East, that Creighton can go on massive runs very quickly with how skilled they are shooting. Yeah, I don't think they get enough credit for being tough either. You know, toughness is not a fist fight punching guys. It's w when you turn the ball over four times, the next four times down, you got to make something good happen. It's mental toughness as well. Jameer Harris leaning and a whistle. Greg McDermott down to a knee pleading for that possession to end without a whistle. That's just Jameer Harris imposing his will. Keeps his eye on that clock, and that's a tough one. Mitchell kind of stepped in. He leaned back even. Tough one to take. You see, you see why Coach McDermott went down to a knee. Well, it's the second on Sharif Mitchell. Kip Kissinger is going to come over and talk to Donnie for a moment. What's the word from Bye. Kip? By rule, they can see if the foul occurred before the shot clock violation. And I think it's pretty clear there. Uh, worth looking at, though. Because remember, that ball did not hit the rim, so that's why they're... Right. Even though he got it off in time, still has to hit the rim. It looks like it will be two free throws as you get a look at Shaheen Holloway in his first year. Back here to Seton Hall, still the all-time assist leader at Seton Hall for a career. The officials are done at the monitor. They're going to talk it over the three of Matt Potter, Kip Kissinger, Burt Smith. That would be a big second foul on Mitchell because, as you said, this is not a very deep Creighton team. And with Farabello out, it's essentially a three man bench, maybe four. Seton Hall. On Sunday against DePaul, shot 45 free throws. So this will not be the last time we see a late shot clock foul possibility. It is going to be two free throws. It's great recognition by Harris to take a look up at that shot clock and then really force. He, he, he forced that impact. You know, he created all the contact there, but that's what. The guys who have that scoring mentality do. Greg McDermott may not have been working with Bird Smith there on this call. That may have been an effort to minimize the whistles against his team as the game goes on. In part because Creighton fouls less than anybody in the country. 12.7 fouls committed per game for the year. That's dead last in the country after 16 in the first meeting against Seton Hall. How about six fouls in two of their last three games? How is that? Well, I'll tell you how it's possible. You got an amazing shot blocker behind you. Are you kidding me? I don't know if I'd ever play any D if I had a guy like Paul Quinn behind me. Oh, no way I'm, you'd give up. I'm just D. funneling it to him, and then I'm getting out in transition. A nice work there by Mitchell, by the way, with the ball in the air to bat it forward to a teammate, but they start the offense so late in the shot clock here. I don't bother you to stop playing defense. Oh, I, I take some risks. Tyerman whips it into the corner, and Miller didn't know where the shot clock was. So this is exactly what Seton Hall does. 
you know, we're excited if, if you're Creighton that, hey, we, we escaped that. But next thing you know, like you mentioned, you look up 10 seconds. That's what Seton Hall wants you to do. They want to feel, want you to feel like you've escaped, but only for a few seconds until that shot clock goes down. And now it's a violation, and here they come. Well, that's the epitome of coming up. That that's whole possession, it. right? Make it ugly. Make it uncomfortable. Disrupt. That's what Seton Hall does defensively. Now a deflection and nearly taken in by Nemhard. It's off of him with 13 to shoot. And, and Seton Hall, you know, it's not always a Rembrandt, right? It's not always beautiful, but they get the job done. And it's a team that Shaheen Holloway basically says, look, I'm going to get 9 or 10 guys from this area. They know how to play. They know how to play my style. And we're going to get the job done. And that is knocked down by Oda Cali, his first points of the night. And this is what they do. They'll stop you at one end and they put it together with a nice possession on the offensive end. What makes them really good at times is they put two and three of those together. Shireman to the rim, changing direction in midair. Yeah, he doesn't get enough credit for, we talked about his rebounding prowess and we talk about how he can knock down some threes, but getting his nose to that rim. Doesn't do it a lot, but he's got great size, great handle. Tate Davis just thought about a three there. Didn't take it. Instead, it's Alamir Dawes. Wow. Talk about a knuckleball. There was no rotation on that shot. Can be a kick a little Tim Wakefield there on that yeah. and you're shooting it on the way up because you have a bigger the bigger Miller in front of you So it takes a it takes a little bit of that spin off of it as it comes off of his fingers You were mentioning Shire a shoot around earlier today and he said I, I didn't know exactly how the rebounding would translate from the summit league to here But man this kid just has an understanding of where the ball is gonna end up and that's what you hear so much from great rebounders is they just understand angles. And, and he's tough. So, yeah. that, that, you know, toughness travels. It, it really does. So whether it's Division Two to Division One, if it's a smaller conference to a bigger conference, if, you are, if you're a tough player, you got a tough guy on the glass, that's going to travel. You can carry that with you. Again, Creighton into the late shot clock through Paul Brenner with seven to shoot. And this is going to be a foul down low on the back end by Paul Brenner. And if that's Trey Jackson, that's his second personal. This is a situation where te your teammates have to understand. Trey Jackson's already got one. He gets another one. You're in big trouble. Go help. Dig. Force Paul Brenner to be a passer. I don't know if you had the same feeling. I thought Richmond was going to dig. It looked like he was thinking about it. You, you know, with a guy like Hulk Printer who's not used to playing with his back to the basket, at least he hasn't in his career, really, you got to make him think. Make him uncomfortable. That means going to double, then getting out of it. Now Samuel's back in as Shireman shoots an air ball. This is a critical moment for Seton Hall with the two on Samuel to keep him live. Yeah, he, he's in a tough spot here. Because a lot of what Seton Hall does is they try to get downhill. They're not going to throw the ball inside to Samuel to go one-on-one -on -one with Kalkbrenner. So he has to be aware not to go over the back on rebounds. <laughs> Harris spun it out, and that's how his season has gone from three. Jameer Harris. That looks like one of those carnival games that you're not sure supposed did. to win, right? <laughs> Stuffed animals yeah. been on the rack for three years. Ball's lopsided for a reason. That's right. Down low, Kalkbrenner over his head, and we get a whistle on a tough catch. And let's see. They avoid the third on Samuel. It's Oda Cali instead. Interesting ball game so far. Is that in part because you're, you're just getting a little fatigued from the season? No, I think they have. Seton Hall has Madari Richmond, who we know is an a phenomenal one-on-one -on -one player. You, know, you have Jameer Harris who can knock down shots. I just meant more what you're talking about spreading the ball out at this time of year. You're not going to get the same lift from threes or it's just not going to go well oh, some nights. Well, when you're struggling, it, yeah. obviously it's so many reasons why that happens, but 
regardless of why that happens, it means you got to move. That ball has to move. It has to switch sides of the floor. Some coaches say you get to the second and third side of the floor. One assist ain't getting it done. No, it's. Here's the depot going to work with those bright shoes, and he misses rebound. Paluma. And there's another opportunity there. You know, you, you it's one on one basketball. It's six or seven dribbles to back down and a miss. Not a whole lot of touches. Receiving the hall around the perimeter there. Up top, Mitchell got the feet set and knocked it down. And that's big. Anytime you go to your bench, especially Creighton, <laughs> anytime they go to their bench and they get something positive on the offensive end from one of their guys, especially on the road, it's huge. 15 total minutes from the bench last time out. Tough wraparound pass. Samuel scrapping for it, and we're going to get a foul before the shot. Matt Potter has a foul against Creighton down low, and it looks like it's going to be Mitchell, and that's his third. And you see there's just a just a, a, a mishmash. This is what Seton Hall wants. You know, they want clear passes, they want catches and finishes, but those 50-50 balls are so important to their success if they're not shooting. And you talked about it. It's not a great three-point shooting team, Seton Hall. So these are ways to get extra possessions. That's what it's going to take, 50-50s. You saw the freshman from the state of California, Ben Stoltzberg, coming in and on the line. It's a foul as Samuel attacked the rim. Would love to see more of that from Seton Hall. Keeping the pressure on not just the guard, but Kalkbrenner to have to make a decision. Nice little pick and roll. Usually that happens from the top. But on that out of bounds under, it's, it's, it's awesome to see something coming into play. And it looked to me like it was just two guys saying, all right, pick and roll. Let's see if this works from here. Great job. Samuel 66% hits the first one. He's got five points. It's Paul Brenner just got his first foul. You get the feeling that participation late in this game is going to be important with some foul trouble already for both teams. Well, participation and, and decision making. You know, understanding when you're going for a steal, and sometimes that's harder for Seton Hall because they come out so aggressively from the tip. Got to start to play a little bit smarter. Not be passive, but just make better decisions as you, the game progresses. The styles are just so disparate here. Creighton and Seton Hall. Shireman had it blocked by Richmond. Paul Brenner could not come up with a rebound. And here comes Seton Hall through Samuel. And that's going to be Samuel's third foul. Decision making, Jason. Exactly <laughs> as you said it. Just set a screen, stay there. Now the work and the decision comes from Kadari Richmond. Take a look here. If you're Tyree Samuel, just stand there. You know, you lean in. That's an easy one right in front of the official. Tough. Yeah, I, I, now you have Jackson coming in with two fouls at 6.05 in the first half. And if you lose him, I don't know where you go for size. That's taken away, just ripped out of there by Nadefo, who chased Shireman all the way to the backcourt. What a defensive possession by Nadefo there. Now he hands him off to Jackson, Shireman to the rim, and we get a foul down there. Six seconds on that shot clock, too. You've done such great work with your Seton Hall to now go for the... And something Creighton really does well. I think Villanova probably gets most credit for it, but the two-foot jump stop, the head fake, great job by Shireman not to you know, speed up. We talked about patience, not panicking against this terrific Seton Hall defense. That's two on the depo, by the way. So two on the depo, three on Samuel, two on Trey Jackson. The post players are in major peril for fouls here in the first half. And look, it's the type of game that Seton Hall would like. Will they have enough guys to do what they want to down the stretch? And you talk about Davis being out, so that's another good piece that Shaheen Holloway has gone to that has some versatility. He's without him tonight. And by the way, uh, you're right that Davis is out. Our cameras just showed the other Davis right, in the game. Right, right. So Tay Davis is playing Trey Davis, just so people don't think you're crazy. 
Well, let's get them off the set. One game is not going to change that. Right. Right. Oh, to Cali, sinks a jumper. Hey, that's a good sign yes. for seeing the hall, too. Really is. You start to get your confidence. That basket gets a little bit bigger. And now more than Kadari Richmond and Alamir Dawes can knock down shots for you. Them hard to the post. Paul Flinner against Jackson on the skip. Nice find. Shireman sticks the three. Again, the overhelping. That time, all eyes were on Paul Flinner, but when that ball is skipped, weak side, Jason, you can't turn and look. You have to turn and run and then figure out where you're going after you've already started running. Creighton looked twice for that diagonal, and they performed surgery on the second one. Oh, to Cali on the dribble, wants to take Goldberg and does the two. It's a great recognition, seeing that you got Goldberg in front of you. Look at there's another deflection. Love those. Oh, to Cali against Shireman and a deflection out of bounds. Staying with a pirate. See, that's a situation there where you talk about. One assist still for Seton Hall where you have numbers, but now it turns into a back down, back down. You lose the moment, and now the ball's poked away. And it really, you got to give credit to, to Creighton and what they did defensively there, especially Shireman. He got back. And now Seton Hall, again, though, the type of game looks like it favors the Pirates at this point. And we got a foul against Shireman, and he can't believe it. That's his first. And for a Creighton team that doesn't foul very much, they feel like they're kind of in the middle of it right now. Man, I, I, just like we, we've had conversations every game about is it easier to play fast or slow? I, I always think it's easier to slow a game down than it is to speed another team up, but also it's easier to make a team play ugly than it is to make a team play a pretty game like you play. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I it's don't just, know what you mean. I don't oh. play a pretty game of anything, not even connect four. Well, then you just have to trust me. I, I'm JB. going to. Has anyone called you JB? Uh, you sure. Okay. Well, yeah. I got them all. You I just got a bunch did. of them. I got a bunch of them. You can do whatever you want. I'll respond to most of them. <laughs> Here's Nemhard getting to the rim. Oh, that was pretty, huh? Yeah, he's just, you know, he's one of those players, I say, he gives the game what it needs. You know, you forget about him. Kaluma's doing his thing. Clark Brenner, obviously. Shireman, one of those polarizing players. And then you forget about him, and Nimhart hurts you. Early three goes down for Dawes. And what a day for Alameda Dawes so far. He's such a, uh, an effective player when his shot selection is, is better. Nimhart catch and shoot. Missed it and over the top of the backboard. Seton Hall could really use a signature win. They're hanging around at home against the Blue Jays. DM. The odd for a Creighton fan to watch a game when they're so cavalier with the basketball because Creighton has been so good at yeah. protecting it. And, and the conversations I've had with, with Coach McDermott this season is Baylor Sherman's one of those guys you have to, you got to give him some rope, some leash. You got to let him go a little bit. A nice dive to the rim and a two there for Jackson. A hard cut down the bucket. The attacking of Paul Quinter is so important. You got to go right at his chest and go strong. We've seen it twice now. One from Samuel, now one from Jackson. Him hard to Miller. That's no good. Rebound mid stride for Richmond. He's got goal eyes and he ties the game. Great makes for Seton Hall. Another skip deflected by Miller. Oh, Shireman had a notion there. Kaluma crowded out, wrapped around, got to the lane, and an offensive foul on Kaluma. And yeah, there were a couple of fouls here on Arthur Kaluma. There was a hook. To start in front of the bench. 
You'll see it right there. Watch his right hand. That's an easy one. And a little close look for the official there. Couldn't see it. And then the next one, they got it. And there's some influence in this building. Seton Hall fans, they know the game. And they, they let the officials know also very good officiating coming from them. The fans as well, at least in their hands. Oh, they absolutely are on every call. <laughs> that was a big charge call. Yeah. It would have been the third against Trey Jackson if it went the other way. Here is Jackson against Zierman. Hands on him, no call, and it won't go. Rebound for Zierman. Oh, he traveled. He absolutely traveled. Another turnover for Shire, I mean, that's, you know, the, the, these turnovers, this is what I call a, a pro bono turnover. It's on the house? Yes, yeah, it's, it's free. <laughs> the defense didn't have to do anything, also known as unforced errors. Yeah. But that's huge in a game like this. The crowd is into it. But that's what Seton Hall has done, to speed you up in its momentary panic. Richmond got away from Shireman and missed the three. And we're going to get a foul on the rebounding action against Paul Frenner. That's his second person. And the one thing that Shaheen Holloway has done a really nice job of is getting his team to continue to fight. You remember that DePaul game Sunday? They missed their first 10 field goals. Ended up continuing to fight through that. Sometimes it's hard when you get to a, a new team as a coach and you have players who you didn't necessarily besides KC and the depo that you didn't necessarily recruit trying to get them to be fighters to play the way you need them to play and Shaheen always done such a phenomenal job of that obviously we know it's St. Peter's but but here at Seton Hall already he would like to see better free throw shooting from his team as Davis gives them just his second lead of the night one for two Moving down to a minute and a half in the first half. Look at Shaheen Holloway in the stance on the sideline. Paul Brenner into Jackson, showing his hands. Paul Brenner scores. And a timeout called by Creighton's bench. And those are our plays right there. We, it is Seton Hall's identity. Yeah, it speaks to the heart of what they've done. I mean, they've made three threes so far. It's not a tremendous three-point shooting team, but they're hanging around. One point down to Creighton. Jackson and Paluma one-on-one. -on -one. Jackson got a step on it and scores with the left. Another guy that Shaheen Holloway is convinced. Listen, you can take advantage. Yes, we know you want to shoot threes and face up, but take advantage of your speed and quickness against bigger guys. The very transfer. Jackson gives Seton Hall the lead. Shireman. Oh, King goes up for the offensive rebound. Tapped back out, and Nemhard comes up with it. Shireman wants it. Instead, the floater gives Creighton the lead for Nemhard. Such great balance. Ryan Nimhart is just he's so good when he gets into those scenes. Such a great decision maker. I love that kid's game. His brother Andrew would have left that game. I mean, yeah. That's an old one. That is an old you one. You can take that to your uh, family I think, reunion. I think, you, I think you stole that, actually. So yeah, well. Thanks for giving it back. They're all recycled, but it's good for the environment. <laughs> it's, a, it's a one point game, final possession. For Seton Hall here in the first half. Dari Richmond past Fireman to the rim. Great vertical defense by King. And that's it for a gritty first half at Prudential Center. A little bit better for Seton Hall. To your point about passing, Seton Hall had three total assists in the first half. Creighton had eight on 14 made field goals. But it's a one-point game here at halftime, and off we go in what could be one of those signature wins for the Seton Hall Pirates who are right around the bubble right now. Yeah, this first five minutes, I would say that first, before that first time out comes, you got to be able to have control of what you're doing for Seton Hall. And Amir Dawes, another three. He has 14 for Seton Hall. It's a nice play. That's when Alamir Dawes is at his best. When he's trying to, to dribble and force things over the top, struggles a little bit. 
It's a nice job by Shaheen Holloway to run a play for him right out of that locker room. A little touch on a high low, and Kalkbrenner finishes for Creighton. Uh, we talked about those ACC transfers for Seton Hall, and Dawes is one of them. Came from Clemson. He was a top 100 recruit out of high school from here in Newark. And man, has he been big tonight. Tyrese Samuel with three personal fouls. That's a tough shot that won't fall. It's over the backboard. Dawes said he got hit on the arm. And he didn't get the call. Well, sometimes in those situations, Jason, you, you're worrying so much about the... Yeah, he did. I think he's got an argument. Got hit on the arm there, but you're worried about getting that contact and getting the foul that you don't really focus on what's most important, and that is taking a nice shot. We had a camera that was over the basket. I believe it's one of the, like, in-stadium mounted cameras. It is now dangling. Let's watch from the vantage point of the injured party. Boy, life sometimes feels like that wow. kind of a spiral, doesn't it? I'm just going to say, it's like a night out on the town with Jason Benetti. Don't do it. I knew you were going to do it. Saying. Look, he's ready to go to spring training in a couple of weeks. The best in the business. So good. Gary Cohn. Yeah, he really is. That booth in New York. guy, too. Oh, tremendous. Gary, Keith, and Ron are the best in the business. Tremendous people. Awesome folks, and uh, that was the fastest ladder match I've ever seen. We got it done. Did we? Yeah, yeah. Camera's back up and running, and so are we. Okay. Trey Alexander, a quiet first half. Five to shoot for Shireman against the depot. Shireman threw it off the body of Samuel as he was juggling the ball. And now here comes Richmond, just backing in. Backing and backing and rising and scoring to Darren Richmond. Yeah, another deflection that leads to a basket for Seton Hall. Other way, Alexander is decked going to the rim. And two free throws coming for Trey Alexander. It's a nice job by, by the defense of Seton Hall. But, but when you score at one end, you have to retreat. You got to get back and... Alexander with two fouls, staying aggressive. Understanding, yes, they are all celebrating. Sometimes teams now they're trying to sort themselves out and beat them back down the floor. You get two free throws. And the third foul against KC Medefo while he's at it. The active shot block leader in NCAA basketball. And uh they need to take out the ladder on that one earlier, considering how many shots it's projected. Okay, and with KC Medefo, he is the heart and soul of this Seton Hall team. So, you know, you, you can sub around the big guys. We've seen it already from Shaheen Holloway with Jackson and Samuel. It's hard to put someone else in that has the heart and that will of a KC in the depot right now. So he's got to play smart. When you think about where he came from, St. Peter's, they go and they scrap for everything that they can get, making that run to the second weekend yeah. of the NCAA tournament. And before that, not a lot of talk about Casey Nadefo out of high school. Hawk Brenner altered that shot there, and here comes Creighton the other way. Hawk Brenner scanning, got the eyes up. Samuel, a little arm bar, body to body. Shireman up top. Missed it, and we went over the backboard without harming a camera. It, it, it took probably four fouls, but they figured out how to guard Kalkbrenner. They figured out you make him dribble three, four, five times, and you don't give up any ground. You don't have to lean into him. You just have to stand your ground and see what he decides to do. So I wonder if we see Creighton deploy him differently here in the second half as Richmond scores again. He looks unstoppable some days, and some halves for Seton Hall. Kaluma dropped the shoulder. It's an offensive foul. Nice defense by Nadefo with three fouls. He stayed in there. That's the spirit you're talking about. Yeah, and he only knows how to play one way, Nadefo. And Kaluma helps him. Extends that arm, and he takes the hit. But the question is, how long will... Shaheen Holloway leave Nadefo in the game. Listen, there's a lot of time to play. 
And you want him to stay aggressive. That's the only way he really knows how to play, Casey Nadefo. He's got three. Tyree Samuel has three. Here is Samuel well out high. He's not going to take that. He's only tried ten threes all year. Maybe he will. And knock it down. It's a different shot from that corner. It's about six inches shorter than anywhere else on that three-point line. So a lot of guys are comfortable from there that aren't comfortable up top. Well, they fed him again, and that one was more in rhythm off the catch. Seton Hall by six. Richmond is looking for a foul against Shireman. And a takeaway for Richmond. Up ahead, Dawes. And he lost it out of bounds. He's done that twice now. He's anticipating some contact. He did it on the three-pointer. May have gotten bumped on the three-pointer. But that can't be your priority here. That's just great defense by Nemhart to jump backwards out of the way. He knew Dawes was looking for the body-to-body. -body. Wasn't there. But the priority is to score the ball. If you get hit, so be it. Maybe you get an extra shot at the foul line. But first and foremost, you have to go to score the ball, not to get contact. Here comes the crowd, Donnie, as loud as really we've heard them tonight in unison with the defense champ. Paul Brenner spinning. The tip there for Miller wouldn't go. And the wrestling match leads to a tie-up. It'll stay with Creighton. Miller threw his body in there to keep the possession. Really good job here defensively to not foul. Paul Brenner maybe initiated some of that, but this is where I think you need to get the jump ball, the actual jump ball into play. Forget the possession arrow. The team's worked so hard on the defensive end. Love to see them jump this ball up. Like in the NBA. It's not that hard. You'd have three or four a game. That's it. I think our strikes are capable of doing that. Tend to shoot for Nemhard. A lot of late shot clock for Creighton. And again, a deflection for Seton Hall. Even guys that you don't consider defensive-minded guys like Dawes understand they have brought into what Shaheen Holloway has taught them. Fight on the defensive end and will make life easier on this end of the floor. This team has evolved in a major way over the course of the Big East season. Really have. Winners of seven of eight. Shaheen really wanted points there, and we're going to get a foul down low. And if it's Samuel, it's his fourth. It is foul trouble mounts for Seton Hall looking for a major win. Sometimes players, they, they, they struggle with understanding that you don't have to work that hard to get your shot off. You have to put players around you, and Dawes has done just that. He's accepted that he has guys who can get him involved. He doesn't have to work that hard to get his own shot off. Creighton having to work very hard in the offensive end. Alexander bags up big one. Creighton won the first meeting 83 61. Seton Hall never was in sync there. To the rim, Richmond too short. There's Shireman finding the ball at the high point for the rebound. And Creighton can tie with a three. Double screen there. Paul Brenner will win run. It's absolutely crowbarred out of there. Fight on the deck. Miller comes up with it for Creighton. He's been everywhere on loose balls recently. Alexander late shot clock. Pitch out for Miller on the catch. Wow, he got it. Wow. Again, the ability to stay spaced. That's coming from one of your younger guys, understanding I just got to get out of my guard's way and be ready to have those hands to be able to shoot that ball after I catch it. Well, tonight is really the land of opportunity here for Creighton off the bench. He's going to Cali, knocks it down. Francisco Farabello out. He's under the weather, so some minutes available. And somehow that ends up with Paul Brenner. I think Nimhart might have, he might have lost that ball trying to make a decision. You need those breaks on the road sometimes.
No contact, no call against Miller, no call there against Kalkbrenner. Ball on the ground. Eventually, Jackson comes up with it. He's dispossessed. It's out of bounds. Bodies everywhere. It's Creighton basketball. Oda Cali thought he had it, couldn't corral it. And the Blue Jays take over. Yeah, look, this is one where Otakali has to fall right here. It looks like he's pushed. He's got to almost take a dive <laughs> and sell that to the officials because he was just so off balance. A little nudge did the rest. He's one step away from really cleaning out statistician of the stars at Skeeta. And I'm really glad that he ended up <laughs> courtside instead of on a table. Foul against Otakali, his second. I know because I saw you grab your drink, so there was no way you were protecting anybody on that one but yourself. Yeah, it's a one eighth remaining bottle of water I was taking care of instead of Ed to see what kind of teammate I am. <laughs> Call Brenner for two, and Creighton has a one point lead. <laughs> Richmond driving Miller. Got into the lane, help came. The depot didn't want the three. He wants to drive though, right into Kalkbrenner. Wow. Again, knowing your strength, they're backing off of the depot, and, and I'm sure you heard this a lot. You're open for a reason. Oh, yeah, I absolutely heard so, that. So, Nadefo understands I don't need to shoot this because I can get downhill once I catch it and no one's on me. I don't know what was the more aggressive move, the depots are yours. We'll debate it during the break. Out of bounds. Seton Hall basketball. There's the toughness in the corner for Richmond. And sometimes when you're when you're aggressive, coaches tell their guys, listen, just be disruptive. You don't have to steal every single ball. Just be in the vicinity, disrupt, and and this is when you get deflections and now extra possessions if you're Seton Hall. Miller had his palms up. He was frustrated, and I believe the fan there was doing a Mike, uh, a, a Mason Miller yeah, what it was. <laughs> yeah, with the hands in the air. Dawes wrapped it around. Wow. Yes, in the finish for Seton Hall. Nice job by Dawes. You got to think those jump shots earlier helped that move a little step back, and now you draw a couple of guys. Get some attention and give it to Jackson. Now this is a time where Creighton has to continue to get something from Shireman without Cochran in the game. Wow. And we got an offensive foul against Shireman, who took down Oda Cali. Absolutely. We love our pets. But we don't always love their hair. <laughs> right? Like, that was that's important right. to Coach Calhoun, I have to imagine, Absolutely. that you have the right guy on the book. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 55-53. The score Seton Hall by two. Moving to 11 minutes to go. A lot of deflections in this game. Loose basketballs. Oh, Nadepo. Oh walled up that time. But Shireman behind. And a foul call. Nadepo will go to the line. Well, you see what's happening. Nadepo is... And, and, and here's the the benefit of not being a three-point shooter. Is there's going to be a ton of space for you now to pick up speed and get downhill. And against Kalkbrenner, he's not going to take... Stand in and take a charge. He's going to go try to block that, so you have to attack his chest. Great job by Nadefo. For me, and I want to know what your thought is here, the officials have called verticality very well to me and let the guys play when they have their arms up. Right. And on that first play, they, they allowed that. Yes, right. But it was the next one, the hand comes down, and now it's a, you, you have to call that. But you're absolutely right. Anytime you have a, a guy like Kaufman, I think you, you really have to be aware of that verticality. 0 for 2, Nadefo at the line, 62% for the year. Taluma goes high for Kalkbrenner, and he has it redirected, rang off the backboard on the pull-up. It is no good for Dawes. Jackson soaring in too much on it. Up ahead, Alexander met by Nadefo. Nemhard to Kaluma in the corner for the lead. That's a, a, a big shot. You can tell Graydon McDermott reached down and gave Kaluma five as he knocked that down. I thought that was a shot you didn't need from Dawes. Maybe a little bit of a delayed heat check. Mm -hmm. 
You know, possession's so important. You don't need that three to probably get that any time. Especially when you've played so well in the half court defensively yes. at points. Kadari Richmond in reverse, spinning to face. He missed it. And sometimes those quick shots are just as bad as, as turnovers, and that's what Creighton turned that into. And eventually led to the sixth Blue Jay with a made three. Up high, Paul Fretter was on the end line. Seton Hall is defending that so well. The pick, the roll, they're collapsing back. Just take a look. And even if it's not your guy, you got to get back. This time it's the depot. We just, or I'm sorry, it's Otakale. He just kind of continues to back up. That pass has to be a little bit more sharp. Two plays before, Kaluma just kind of threw it up, not in the scoring area for Paul Fretter. You gotta put your big in a, in a better spot against smaller teams. But Nadefa was involved too. I mean, he kind of puts him in a cage yeah. by being in the lane as well. Jameer Harris for Nadefa in the lane against Hulk Brenner. Boy, he makes it tough to see the rim, doesn't he? It's like a sixth grader playing with third graders. I know that feeling, but they're <laughs> my age group. Alexander had it wiped away. And Seton Hall continues to defend. They continue to just disrupt. They got to pay it off at this end. Can Dawes do it against Dyerman? Tried to turn the corner. Too much dribbling. Out of bounds. It's going to be Creighton basketball. And you mentioned it. You're playing so well in the half court in that first half. You don't need the over dribbling. This is just a nice job of helping. A teammate out, it's always seems to be Nadefo somewhere in the mix. Casey Nadefo is so good on the weak side. The career block leader active right now for the NCAA, the active leader in blocks. Paul Brenner on Jackson. A little help out of Cali. He killed the dribble, turned and missed. He was in no man's land, Donnie. It's a great job again of just standing Kalkbrenner up. I, I really feel like Kalkbrenner has to do a better job of catching the ball lower. Closer to that block now, it's just an easy turn over the top, but they're not allowing him to catch it deep enough. Dawes, tough shot, another miss. Seven straight misses for the Pirates. It's a nice job defensively by by Creighton to collapse things, to shrink things, you tighten it up inside, you suck off of guys who can't shoot, and you focus more on those guys coming off the curls. Good job by Greg McDermott's guys. Somebody tonight is going to get a really hard won victory. Yeah. And it's that time of year. You, know, you just understand that this line is... Kind of coming into view in terms of the Big East tournament. Seating. Yep. Seating so important. Sorry, Jason. No, Seating being on so the right important. side of the bracket. As there's a foul on Oda Cowley. Uh, all of that on the line, including Seton Hall's NCAA tournament hopes as we come down the stretch. in Philadelphia is that right? ever you may have a chance to see it it's incredible you'll I, see I, I, no I, I know they're crazy. they'll burn the city down if they win or well, lose I, well I, <laughs> you gotta love the passion it's a wonderful fan base oh, including Mike Trout amazing. by the way big eagle fan yes Alexander across the lane nice thread through and he got two it's a three-point game for Creighton what a pass and what a great play out of a timeout. You know, sometimes players step on the floor coming out of that timeout and forget what they're running. Are you saying you did that? No, I, I don't think I ever did that. But I, I have played with guys who just forgot we were even in a timeout. They just continue to just run their own stuff. It doesn't work. Oh, uh, you hate to see it. No, you hate to be a part of it. Seton Hall scoreless nearly five minutes now on that miss by Richmond. Alexander to Shireman from the corner. Oh. Tough shot. 
didn't call bank. I think that he might have banked that in from the corner. How did he even get that up to the rim? He was bent. Oh, so good. Wow. Uh, you know, I, we've talked about Creighton and their home court advantage. They travel. I mean, they, they, yeah, they, 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 they travel really well. And they love their team. You look around here, obviously, you can't tell which ones are the, blue, the, the difference in Seton Hall and Creighton, but how many more do you need if you have a guy like that? None. None. He is the leader of the band. <laughs> Creighton by six. Seton Hall has gone quiet wow. offensively and a big floater there for Dawes and the Pirates. So now here you go. You need some pressure. You come out of a timeout, you make a basket. Now you need your defense to step up. Guys have to know where they are. Harris is playing catch up a little bit here in that zone. Dog looking around to see the help on the screen from Kaluma. Shireman had it blocked by Nadefo. He is so good at that. So good. And, and when they get their feet together, I don't know. There's a saying, a wolf is fed by its legs. It means it goes wherever its food is, it goes. That's what Seton Hall. Seton Hall is fed by its defense. So is Creighton right now. Alexander on a rim run. It's Creighton by six. And Creighton understands, too. They take such... They take such care of the ball one, but they also understand when to hold up, when to push the ball. They make you pay for silly turnovers, and tonight has been no exception. Yeah, they play their tails off defensively here in the Absolutely. second half. They've allowed 18 second half points to Seton Hall. Samuel on the face up over Kalkbrenner, missed it. Good defense by Kalkbrenner. That, that's the effect he has. You, you don't want to try to put it on the floor. He covers great ground, and obviously he has the link. In Biggie's play only, Creighton has had the best field goal percentage defense in the league. So, not surprising they would play strong D as Alexander threw it right to Richmond. Shireman and a bind. Richmond left it short. It's out of bounds to Creighton. How about Shireman getting back? And Richmond playing a little hero. Yeah, we've seen it a lot for Seton Hall, especially in the second half. They do a nice job defensively and just can't pay it off at the other end. And it's because of guys retreating, being disruptive. And in that time, it was they were Shireman. Great job. And by the way, Creighton has played better defense without fouling here in the second half. It was just seven total fouls called in the entire second half of this game. They're also dominating the glass, which you know, allows a plus 18. They have done the job of securing it on the defensive end and getting extra opportunities. Wow. Shireman, a rainbow, and Creighton builds the lead to nine. And that is what you call a dagger because you know how much Seton Hall is putting into their defense and how they communicate for Shireman just to step up and knock them down from deep. That hurts. He's got that look in his eyes sometimes. Man. Dawes. Got it for three. Oh, man. He put Nemhard on skates. And uh, that's big. And now Seton Hall has to figure out a way to speed Creighton up just a little bit. Three and a half minutes to play. You can't allow Creighton to stay comfortable up six. Shireman. Another. It's a nine-point game for Creighton. I don't know if that was a Creighton fan or a Seton Hall fan that just elbowed me on the top of the head. That's how that's I mean, how wild it is in this building. That shot came down so hard, you got a piece <laughs> of the action. I looked over, your head was down. Yeah. Here's Nemhard ahead of the pack. Reverse, and it's a goal pen. The tempo tried to wipe it away. There was very little contact on the rim in these threes for Shireman. The contact was all on how Donnie's about, skull. Yeah, how about two daggers? Shireman knocking it down from deep. Saturday on Fox. This is his 114th game today, so he's got some he's got some mileage, he's got some creases, but he also has a toughness that he's built up.
He's got almost as much mileage as you've gotten tonight after that guy <laughs> cracked you in the skull. Hey, Newark's a tough city, man. Hey, I, uh, I'm just disappointed. Our, uh, Newark's a tough city. <laughs> now Donnie's talking directly to the fan instead of me. It's a dream scenario. He's got somebody else to talk to. Uh, now, Creighton, I mean, you talk about this team and you you think of Creighton it's a sleek offensive team they yep. spread the floor the whole they have been extraordinarily tough tonight as Nemhard turns the corner and to win a game like this gives some credibility not that they needed some but even more to a Creighton team for winning in every type of game you know they don't get enough credit for being a tough team yeah they just don't you You're talk right. about their shooting you talk about Kalkbrenner and his defense Nemhard speed Alexander's ability to score I, I just don't believe that they're giving enough credit Creighton for their toughness and they showed it tonight Greg McDermott in season number 13 for the Blue Jays on his way to 10 and 3 if this holds They've shot 61% from the floor tonight against a very good defensive team in Seton Hall Kalkbrenner using the body against Samuel off the pump. He scores. And that's a nice job by Kalkbrenner to say what we talked about earlier in the game. Just sometimes you got to let him score. It's more important to get that time off the clock. Yeah, to keep Seton Hall right now with 38 and a half minutes in to 12 free throws yeah. attempted only. That, that's really hard to do, Don. It is, especially for a team who doesn't shoot a lot of jump shots. Paloma got hit hard, and he'll go to the free throw line. Some coaches complain that they're not going to the free throw line as much as their opponent, but usually those teams are teams that shoot a lot of jumpers, a lot of threes. This is not a Seton Hall team that shoots a lot of jump shots, so the, the fact that they have only been there 12 times it's, it's pretty special when you talk about Creighton's defense Paluma hits the first one how big is the game coming up Saturday already a sellout as of a couple days ago in Omaha Yukon Creighton then they'll take on Providence as well happy Valentine's Day from Bill Raftery and I from Rhode Island Oda Cali off the window tipped by Shireman to call Brenner who is the scariest team in the Big East right now? I think it's got to be this one we're looking at. Xavier is still trying to figure out life without Fremantle, and, and they, they will. They're so well coached, but I think we're, we, we saw them play tonight. Creighton is definitely better than what their record has shown, and they showed a lot playing against this pesky Seton Hall defense. And their own defense, again, we talked yeah. about it. They've only allowed 23 points in the second half. And, you know, for Shaheen Holloway, some opportunities still here on the schedule. They're at Villanova. That at UConn game is so big for them. Then Xavier at home. Still some chances to get a signature win as they move toward loss number 10 for the year. You know, the net ranking in the mid-50s opening play today. The garden's going to be so important to especially Seton Hall for their NCAA tournament fortunes. Every game has to be approached as an opportunity to put yourself in a better position. For some teams, it's to play the spoiler. Seton Hall is not that team right now. They're the, they're a team that you know, maybe on the outside looking in, but they still have an opportunity. I think the schedule lends itself to that. You got to clean up a, a couple of things, but. Their ability to play defense and, and make teams play their way is what makes them so scary still. Well, and, and to your point about their defense, Creighton right now at 61.4% against Seton Hall tonight, that would be the best field goal percentage in a Big East game for anybody this year against this defense. Paul Frenner saying, uh, did we need that foul on me? <laughs> did, was that necessary? Uh, DePaul Villanova coming up, and the Blue Demons have played some better basketball recently now. Hey, you get into that part of your schedule where you're like, okay, we can get this one. We can surprise some people. You know, we, we, we can get a nice quad one win, but you're also 
getting into that part of the schedule where you don't want to come in here and get popped by a Georgetown team. You know, a team that really has, has struggled all season, the last two seasons. Those games are just as scary, if not scarier. Just going to walk it out now. Seton Hall led 55-53. Creighton has closed 22 to 7. From our statistician Ed Spita. We mentioned that a couple times. We might as well mention the people who work way harder back in Los Angeles. Tyler Dare, our director. Brad Weimer, our producer. Everybody associated with this telecast. Shot clock violation. In the middle of those heartfelt, sentimental comments about our stat guy, Ed. Seven straight wins for Creighton. Longest in a conference since 2012. And look out. United States, Seton Hall falls to Creighton. The